Well, you go first. <laughs> uh, does your standard operating procedure require visual inspection of manholes in this station daily, uh, especially ones in remote areas, or that uh, if they overflow, go into a creek or a river? No. And, and if not, why? Well, manholes, we have 5,000 plus manholes, 4,000. Four to five thousand plus manholes, so we can't we can't uh, we can't inspect them all. Well, I, I, think, think, I, was, was, I think he means a list station. I, I mean, I mean anything that could only flow into a creek or a river, especially a remote one. Obviously, this one was because nobody saw a flashing light. Yeah. Uh, so, well, uh, I know there's guys riding around this city in white trucks all day long. Yeah. And it doesn't take long to go down the street and say, okay, everything. Uh, no overflows here. Yeah, yeah. As far as manholes, you know, we have several thousand. I want to say five. We have several thousand manholes, so it's unlikely that we're going to have someone in at all those locations in the course of a day or a week. However, however, <laughs> well, however, what we have deployed are uh, some manhole monitoring sensors that are being. I think we have. Few of them in places. This this week or last week they were installed at some of our critical locations where we know that there's a potential for an overflow. You know, we've had one there before. So we've started to put equipment in those manholes that does notify us when it starts to see the level in the manhole level. So we are getting there. We're not there yet. But as far as list stations, our SOPs do include visual inspection which is what the gentleman <coughs> that Wednesday morning should have done, and we would have caught it much sooner. Da daily inspection? Not daily. Mm -hmm. the, the, the maybe every well, other day. Well, daily. Depends on the, it depends on, because they work in shifts, so it's well, mostly well, by shift. Maybe you should update it daily. Well, well, it's by shift, so that would be twice a day. Somebody look at it, and they will change switch to shift. So you're saying it's twice a day that the SOP yeah. requires it? And so how did it get and by all four days? just say this on clear. It's not all of our lift stations. It's the larger ones like Reamer and the Gorto Road. We, those are the ones that are the largest yeah. ones. So you're so saying it went eight thing. shifts without anybody so noticing it? that next morning. It went to that next morning. Without, four days. Uh, We're still talking after the largest period. Yeah. In the very beginning of your presentation, you made a comment about the two types of events. This kind of event, and then there's this kind of event. And because there was, I can't remember the words you used, I'm old, so I can go have an instant recall and, and, and perfect recall. But it, because it was this kind of event, it didn't require some kind of human uh, double check or whatever it was. So I'd like you to repeat that again I missed that part. Yeah. What was the word you used? Are you talking about the charts, man? The two types of events, you said, were two types of events. I don't recall that. I know I was talking about two different levels. Yeah, but the two types of events that the SOP requires are visual inspection and manhole monitoring. Okay, but the visual inspection is the one that's the largest one. That's the one that we have to do. Yeah, but the visual inspection is the one that we have to do. And the difference between those two levels is what we report to people. Yeah. Were you talking about? Routine maintenance on the, on the thing that the company just initiated without telling us. Yes. Before that, before yeah, that. and he had a name for that versus this kind of thing. Did they ever report that they were going to the maintenance when you were talking that part? Okay. Yeah. I still um, have the question. He's trying to answer this. Okay. So, yeah, uh, typically when they were allowed to do some maintenance on our site, they were required to inform some of our technicians, our supervisors that they had a technician going out to the site <coughs> and we would get someone to the site and we would inspect the work and make sure that everything was, was going correctly. It was the end of the day and the gentleman wanted to make another adjustment. He knew it was going to take five minutes. So he said, okay, I'm just going to run in here real quick and do this. And he did not notify the city that he was going into the site. He went into the site, made the adjustment and left. Okay. But I think what, what I thought you had said was because it was this type of uh, action that they were performing, that they didn't have to. And, and maybe I misheard. Yeah, it's, well, it was a mock. 
It was a minor. It was a minor. Right. It was a minor. Right. I think that had to do with having an inspector on site. Now we would have had somebody there. I think that's what he thought. That's, that's right. exactly it. Right. But the, that, that wasn't being, the point was we would have had an inspector there and if we had known he was going to do that, we would have had somebody from our staff there with him regardless if it was major or minor. But I think because it was minor, the point I was trying to make was that I think perhaps that's why the gentleman went on in there. That, that is not how the procedure is. We, I mean, we should have been notified, as the girl said, and then we will send the staff member to meet that person. It's an easy fix for that. Check. Very easy fix for that. Check. Don't allow anybody in without county keys or city keys. Well, yeah. they've been working on it, so I think it had been out there. So I think the guy was comfortable about to make that final adjustment and felt, yeah, I get in there, for, like the girl said, five minutes, I got it. Going. So, but no, that is, that is not uh, major or minor. Major or minor, we should have. They, they should have sure, access without your notification. Mm -hmm. right. I got a quick question for you. When you were talking earlier about this bill, you were, everybody's talking about this specific <coughs> bill right now. This is not the first time we've had sewage in the Mississippi River. And I, for one, are tired of buying bottled water and gallons of water for the last two years because I can't brush my teeth with water now, can't cook with it, can't make coffee with it, can't make tea with it. My animals have to drink it, my dogs, my horses. It's not fit for me to drink, but my animals have to drink it. You had said earlier about this bill, but you had mentioned about rain ball. And it kind of, the way I caught it, the way you said it was, well, we got a lot of rain ball, we're going to get sewer in the river. Why uh, is the sewer the, plant set up to that's going to happen? I think Mr. Davis made that comment, not me, because I can tell you, if, it, if it, from the other pool of meeting we've shown, Hydro events that Mr. Davis spoke of, our new equipment has handled that. It, we can't have this with the hurricane, the heavy rains from the hurricanes, the last two years we've had this equipment. We have not had a spill like that from the equipment malfunction. So, abs absolutely. Any spills at all? I can't agree with you on that uh, because what we've done will take care of that. It's been a big one in December. Take care of that. Now, last yeah. December, absolutely, we had 16 inches of rain. <coughs> and the new plant almost, I mean, it maxed the past capacity. It just couldn't hold it on. So it did discharge when we had 16 inches of rain. I've, but, I've got a question for this gentleman here. He's been waiting for a while to answer this question. I'd like to question. Well, let me finish with him and I'll go to him. Thank you. Yes, sir. Keep going. Well, like I said, I just, I was going to try to find out uh, no, if there's going to be an end result to this, but I might have to take stock at Walmart where I buy my water out. <laughs> right. I, I understand. I, I understand, just sir. But here's the deal. They just kind of alluded to it, and, and there were the SCADA system that's going to, that, that was that we were purchased to prevent what happened in the end of December. It's ironic that it made it happen because that's what we're trying to do. Since we've had the majority of the SCADA system in, uh, we've reduced our inflow and in infiltration by 25% minimum, which means what we're doing now is a combination. It's just not the SCADA system that's going to help us identify what we're going to use that technology. We're now identifying how stormwater is getting into our sewer pipes, which is all that water goes to the treatment plant. And we're, so we're not trying to treat the sewer. We got all the stormwater from the streets, and then that's what causes that problem. So, so we're double dosing on that with the technology and um, the, the, uh, the finding of inflow and infiltration that we've had in the past as technology to do. Thirdly, what we're doing, uh, just as a safe measure, we're building another 2 million gallon basin at Wickham Beach. Speaking of, we finally got EPP permitting uh, two weeks ago to begin that process. Um, so hopefully we'll be done with that considerably through that process before the, before the rainy season gets here. So that's the difference with the water energy. It's done. Okay, I'm just going to batch up several so I don't take up a lot of time. The big one is, how do you get a copy of your SOP? And for that matter, why don't you publish it on your website? That's a big one. The second is, where in this SOP does it say, what was the procedure for checking to see if the employees had done their job correctly in checking at the pump station? From what you're saying, I, I haven't heard that there was one. Another question is, in that SOP, where does it say you're supposed to put signs out? Related to that, did you put a sign at Bay Tree Road Bridge, which is the first bridge below the leak site? No, I can tell you that now, Mr. Coleman, because EPD requires it to be accessibility, and that Bay Tree Bridge is not accessible to the public. Sure, Borntow uh, is highly accessible to the public, 
behind the salty sniper where there's not a bridge, but we know folks are back there on the four wheels and thing, and even a sign back there where, where the two rivers can join, and then at the ramp at 131. How about so that's, why, that's why we didn't put one at Baytree. How about Bland Park, which is halfway in between Baytree and Gornte? What well, I'm going to tell you tonight, we, we, can take this, we can take this up with a letter that I don't want to spend all the time with the signs because you've been through that before with EPD. We followed every protocol of EPD uh, required us to do. Uh, but I'd be happy to take that up with We're always willing to, to look at other things we can do and expand where we put signs. But Did you put a field, sign? This field, to ask your question, we followed the protocol we were supposed to follow. Okay. Well, I, then how do we get a copy of that protocol? APD, you're very familiar with them. Go to George EPD. We have to go to EPD to get the protocol for, that the Valdosta City is using. When we, yes, because we have to answer. They're the regulatory agency for the state of Georgia. We have to answer to them. We, we, we have I think to the point is we're, we're citizens here, and we want you to do more than just what the state tells you. And we want you to do things for yes, us. Sir. You work for us, right? And I'm, and I'm, and we're, like you said, we're so not don't just go by what the state tells you. Do what you wanted, what we want you to do for as citizens of, of this community, okay? And he's a citizen of this community. He's saying we want the signs where we need to see them. Absolutely. We don't want them just where the regulation says they have to be. I have to disagree with that whatsoever. I followed up with Mr. Porter and by saying we were certainly looking at expanding that as we do. I mean, as, uh, with this bill, we followed the protocol. We well, that's what I'm saying. That's all you did. You did not do what we want, what we need. You I'm followed right. the protocol. I'm writing down additional signs. I have yeah, we see seen your right, right. speaking. That's exactly what I just said to you, and you, you, you told me right back. Well, yeah. that's all I want to do is follow the protocol. I just do what the, what the government tells me to do. I'm telling you that we're going to add signs. I promise. Okay. And so, and as a result of this meeting, will there be a list of actions and then the follow through on that at a later date? Yeah, because I get it. It'll take minutes right now. Okay. You've heard some of them. I catch base and thrills me. And I love that, like, that's, ten, that's a 10 million gallon catch basin that is overkill. And it I'm is. thrilled about it. What doesn't thrill me is the whole, I'm still stuck on because that's what I do for a living. Documentation. <coughs> Because, again, I'm, I am concerned that at the end of the day, you can throw a fine bill on the job off and throw some money at this. But if you don't have these folks trained, and if you don't have training and people and retraining yearly, and if you don't have the right stuff in your procedures, you're just going to have a problem again and again. And I'd like to take the time to, to show you something. Kind of interesting. I lived, I moved here to Hamilton County four years ago. And I want to show you my legs. Once I started taking showers in the well system off the Wipsabuchi River. That's my legs. I didn't have a spot on them until I moved to Hamilton County. And I, I live now closer. I live two blocks from the Whipple Beach today. And before I moved to where I am today, I lived four blocks. Now, my, and I know, I have, this is one neighbor that, Jean, he just finds bottled water. I have another neighbor, Ace Smith, who lives on 44. He's on a fixed income, and he's going and getting distilled water. He takes showers in distilled water. He doesn't use his well water to take showers. Now that's just two that live a half a mile from me. How many more people do we have that are fixed income in that basin within two, three, four blocks of the Wipaguchi that that are having this problem? Can we move forward? Any other questions? Ms. Parr, Mr. Yes. Um, at our meeting today, unfortunately, it came to light we found out that uh, our Florida Health Department and DEP has been alternating daily water testing along the Wicca River. And um, as of the test that was pulled the 6th of January, the 6th of January at the uh, Valdosta Highway, um, I call it Mass and Valdosta Highway 31, 445. Um, had an extremely high level of coliform in the coli. 
And, and in today's results came back. Uh, we just got those results from yesterday's testing at 150 at the Belleville Bridge. Apparently, the flow or some of the flow has reached dangerous levels there. Um, we have, like I said before, Madison County, Hamilton County, this year's local space for emergencies. We're fixing to probably have a special call meeting to extend hours again. And uh, in the next few days. But we've had, this will be our third health advisory over this field that, that our Florida Department of Health and DEP has issued to Florida on the River Future River. I'm assuming that they will probably have a health advisory issue tonight. Yeah, the health, the, I, I was just texting the health department and they said there's going to be another advisory come out tonight because of what they found Monday and what and, and Tuesday. So this this is an unusual event because normally within a day or two it comes to us and, and uh, it's over with. But this isn't that way. It's coming in slow. And, and you know, so for almost a month now, uh, we're having to issue these advisories to stay out of the river. So on January the 6th, the DEP data <coughs> was for E. coli, 7,776 parts per, per 100 milliliters, and it was at 4,500 for coliform. Safe levels in Florida, I don't know how to answer Georgia, I believe there's anything above 400 for coliform, about 400, and 800 for E. coli. And uh, today at 150, the results was 20, 2,700 at 150 today, <coughs> which is uh, about a third of the <coughs> 31 at 6. So, we're, we're, we're concerned about with this the way the water flow is in the river right now. It's just very, as you know, the river's low, you have very little flow going on. Some of our concerns is a lot of this material may even be trapped in some of the, the low lying areas or sloughs in the along the river banks. And as we have these rain events, I had I live two miles from the river, State River Six, Madison County. I had an inch of rain Friday night, and I'm thinking that the city of Austin had something similar to that. So it just seems to me what I'm seeing here, when we have a, a, a rain event right now of an inch or so, you, you start to see more of this release being done, and you start seeing these higher levels. And my fear is that, and, and our DEP and Florida Park Health is committed, and they're going to be testing daily until they get, you know, they, they tested eight days with no levels of high bacteria, and then they, the second time they lifted the advisory on the second event. And now it appears we're basically going to another advisory. For those of you that live in Madison, Hamilton, Swanee, you know, prepare this going to be probably issue tonight. And I don't know how many days that advisory will be up until we get those same levels. But then I'm most concerned is, I don't need to drag this out, is what's behind it. You know, uh, this, this may be a long-term event for us, and, and we're having to tell our folks, don't drink it, don't get in it, don't you know, test your wells, and do all this stuff. And uh, I, I just, I'm trying to show you or point out the, the impact that this has on everybody. And, uh, We've got a lot of it. We've invested a lot, of it. and I'll just put it out there and flat that we would hopefully we would expect to see about Austin to assist us and recoup some of the costs we've had to incur to uh, monitor our and help our citizens. So just put that as an ask, and uh, we'll go from there. About the personal costs, people who have to buy water because they can't drink water in the river. <coughs> Compensation for that at all? Anything to play? I just want to say, thank you for scoring the question. School of the Pool and Canyon Terra on the other side of the door to the water. I heard all sorts of things today and last week, earlier today. Could you please explain 
who the contractor was, what exactly happened, how big the hole in the pipe, or whatever, where apparently a lot of raw sewage came out of, wherever it came out of, explain exactly who was there, what happened, and how that nobody knows it. Because I hear this stuff, and I'm sure a lot of people do, but nobody really, a lot of people don't really know what happened. Yeah, we're we engaged with, this, with a uh, technology contractor uh, uh, late last year, mid last year, to work on a credit system. The name of the company is EMC, and uh, they've done a great job of implementing the technology that we've asked them to deploy for us. And uh, I should talk to this, but uh, we're, the, we're in uh, Alabama. The, uh, and the reason no one noticed the mammals, because it's in the woods, it's probably quarter mile, half mile, half mile off. Uh, if, you, uh, if you're from Dodd-Austin, you probably know where the like depot and uh, Target is. So if you go behind those stores, it becomes wooded back in that area. If you go back in there a few hundred feet, several hundred feet, that's where the manhole is. And the manhole, there's a manhole on one side of the creek, and then there's a manhole on the opposite side of the creek. So that manhole right there, uh, before it goes across the creek, is where the top came off the manhole. You know, the manhole lid, and that's where it, that's where it came out. So all this stuff just came out of one manhole. One manhole. One manhole. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just want to make a statement. I mean, I've been sitting here listening to this. I understand the reason you guys know I've been a part of it. Uh, and I don't mean to take up the whole time. <coughs> you know, you talk about communication, you're talking about, you know, getting the word out and the things going on here. You're going to have to last week. You're going to have to go for a lot of people. Uh, you know, I know you guys are going to be able to count some people. You don't take it on the chin. I feel like you do. You're not taking it hard on the team. And you're talking about the manhole in the woods. The first email I got from Mr. Barber, it said just that. There was a spill in the woods, heavily wooded area, behind target. In that email, there was not one mention of a sugar creek. Any more way, anything, as bad as it would be in the woods. And we get that email at 12 hours before we get to the place. So as social media started lighting up with all that, I'm defending the fact that, you know, yes, it's a bad split, but I don't think it's hit any of the waterways from what I'm saying. And that wasn't the case. Um, you know, like that word, I had crap on my face when the meeting came out and the pressure. So from what I'm hearing from you, you know, you guys and uh, people here in the audience tonight, they just want to count and go. You know, you guys send me out to work on a manhole, <coughs> you send me out to work on a pole, the point is that I think we had a supervisor there. Somebody needs to be there to answer for these mistakes that we made. Uh, and I'm not picking on you guys, I'm not here to you know, show out or anything, I'm just speaking the truth. This is where we are, this is the reality of it. Uh, it's time for something to be done. Accountability. I know mean, you guys invest a lot of money into this thing. So I grew up with history guys, but you guys sit next to me, I'm not here as much as I do. And it's just, it's never been, I think, the world I've been 30 years, 32 years in the world, so I'm doing the same thing. Um, pick it up and try to hold them accountable for what I do for a living. You know, four radio stations, I followed this since out in the flood and then crumbled the infrastructure. Um, at this point today, uh, being kept informed all along the way, being one of the people on the release, uh, being one of the city's official release, my demand, uh, I couldn't be more impressed with the effort and I just went through this transition over the last two and a half weeks to Martin Head meetings with every single person. And every single one right now, the personnel will tell you that I asked this question. Can I walk this earth? Can I walk into that meeting and show these people? that we're doing everything we could possibly do. 
I would suggest that as we get these new updated meter reading, electronic meter readers that we don't need people to walk the streets anymore, that I want them to walk the 125 crossings we have over waterway in our sewer system. That I want them to put eyes on it as well. That I didn't want this job if we didn't pass flaws and I couldn't commit $40 million to the further improvements on the system because I need to come up with $40 million over the next four years to keep our promise to you guys and the aggressive timeline that we're on in repairs of this. That uh, I can't waste a little bit. I do have to um, We get parking trouble a little. We kind of done a little before we got approval because we wanted to start that process and now we officially have an approval and that 10 million gallon catch basin will assure us that, uh, that nothing. We're two miles from the river now and that catch basin will assure us nothing gets near that river at the treatment plant. We continue to rehab on those for, for probably the next decade. You know that. You know how many there are. You know what we're doing. Additional signage is a great idea as well, John. Um, you want me to hop off the bridge? I'll just leave one well, of them. I know, but I want you to, to come back to us all that